Okay, so it's um, May 19th, is it? No, 20th of May, uh, Saturday. IO has finished up yesterday. I've just gotten back from it. Uh, it was a great time. We've got my IO badge here. Okay, I'm lying. This is the 2016 IO badge. I was there last year. I wasn't there this year. I didn't get the chance to travel to California for IO. I didn't get the ticket. And sort of a little bit annoyed. Mostly due to the fact that last year we didn't get any tech. We got a t-shirt, water bottle and a Google Cardboard. Yay. This year everyone got Google Homes. So, you know, I'm, I'm not... I'm slightly bitter because I know multiple people who went this year and they're all going to be showing off their Google Homes in the office. I'm going to be... Anyway, let's talk about I.O. announcements. So let's get into... Uh, first I'm going to gloss over the other areas, um, Firebase looks cool, but don't use it. Uh, web components, all that jazz from the last few years of I.O. look amazing. I've played with them, they are amazing. But I don't use them every day. Um, the AI stuff, hot damn Google's on a roll with AI. The new TensorFlow stuff, which I've actually played with as well. Very awesome, not going to cover it. Of course what I'm going to cover is the Android stuff, because Android is sort of my bread and butter. It's how I actually earn a living. And it's the main topic of this channel, which uh, we'll get into that. Anyway, Android O is here. Awesome, awesome stuff on Android O has happened. Uh, so let's just skim over Android O. We've got notification channels. Awesome. We've got auto-filling apps, which, by the way, because I have the preview installed on my Pixel XL, which is here. Uh, I'm completely addicted to the auto-filling already. I can't even comprehend not having it. Um, hopefully LastPass, which is the password manager I use, will uh, sort that out, uh, sort out an autofilling service so that we can switch the autofilling apps. Um, new settings menu on Android O, really nice, all good. Uh, background operation trimming, I'm a huge fan of that because if you're one of those people who this is going to cause problems for them in dev, you're probably doing things wrong anyway. So fix that. I'm a huge fan of new background operations. It does cause some confusion though, particularly around uh, in particularly around implicit notifications, but within your app you have to set the package names. Cool stuff, all good things are happening with Android. Uh, oh, of course the big news, the main big news is uh, the um, is Kotlin. Kotlin support, huge fan of this, uh, because I've been using Kotlin for three plus years now back since like the M.2 or the M.3 release of Kotlin, back in its betas. Uh, it's been a tremendously good run for the language. I'm a huge fan. I'm pushing it very heavy in work. I push it so heavy to everyone that it's sort of become a joke. So whenever there's a problem, my first answer is, I don't know what the solution is, but I'll do it in Kotlin. Um, <laughs> so been annoying people, finally got them to let me put it into production like two weeks ago. And now it's official on Android. And it's great because it's official on Spring, which is a tool they've used. And it's official for Gradle, which we use for all our building. So we've one building tool, so it's finally here. Uh, it'll be JavaScript compatible, which is nice, which is cool. But now we've got JavaScript compatibility. And because Kotlin, I wonder will Angular become Kotlin based? Because if Angular becomes Kotlin based, damn, it's cool. And then we just need iOS to support it, and I think we've actually hit like the holy grail of a programming language. You can run on Java, it can run on native, which it already does by the way, and it can run on JavaScript. Just needs the official seal of approval. Anyway, that's really cool. Kotlin's a huge deal. Um, if you haven't tried the language, go try it right now. Look up the talk, start learning it. It's super easy to learn. It's really great. So we've got that. Um, other announcements, instant apps. Very cool, very cool concept. I'm really a big fan of instant apps. Haven't used them, I've never tried them, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, custom actions on Google for apps and aliasing actions, really cool. Can't wait for that as well. That's gonna be a truly great thing. Uh, all the Google Home stuff seems pretty neat as well. Now, let's go on to some of the new things I'm not a fan of. Uh, architecture components. Don't think they're going to work that well. Uh, suppose I better actually explain what I mean by this. But essentially, Android. I know Android has a difficult learning curve at some point because it's easy at first, and then once you hit a certain point of complexity in an app, it just flies off the handle of complexity. Now, if we take that 
and you have to learn basically a huge amount to get past that complexity. You've got this problem of sort of a brick wall where you have to be very proficient to get past it and write clean code. Um, so I can see what they're going for. They're going to ease that sort of transition of proficiency, which is really cool because it takes a, couple, takes about a year for someone to get up to speed to truly understand the Android system at a deeper level. So that seems cool. Um, I'm not a fan of some of their approaches. In particular, the main issue I have with it is the lifecycle stuff. The lifecycle on Android, they ask the wrong questions. Like, oh, the lifecycle problem, it's not an actual problem. The lifecycle is fine. People don't know how to handle it. And when I hear the lifecycle problem, what the problem actually always is, even in all their demos at IO, was the threading issue which is that threading, multi-threading is very difficult. Now I use Oryx Java to solve this, but there are other ways of solving it. So basically the issue is, I don't understand what I'm doing with multi-threading. Uh, seems to be the main issue. So, their solution seems to be to chop up the lifecycle problem into a thousand pieces and just scatter it to the winds all over your app. Rather than providing a really nice threading system that, that latches nicely into Android. So things like live data and stuff, live data isn't actually that bad, but I'm not a fan of the whole life cycle to, uh, solutions they have. But that's my opinion. If you use them, go ahead, they'll be supported, and it'll help ease your transition to becoming a much better Android developer over time. So we've all that jazz. Um, as for anything else at I.O., nothing really too much happened. Um, it was a good I.O. though, it's been a big improvement. We've sort of entered the, the, the ending phases of the third era of Android. So Android sort of has three distinctive eras, if you want to call them that. You've got the first era, which was a disaster, which ran until Gingerbread, or 2.3.3. Then 3.0 to 4.4 was the, the uh, Honeycomb to KitKat era, which was all the hollow theming stuff, where they started getting things like fragments and more screens in. Great run. Now we're in the 5.0 to 8.0 era, assuming Android O is 8, which is the material design era. I don't think it's going to end for another 3 or 4 years, um, or for a long time, but it's, it's really cool. Uh, this has been a great incremental improvement, so it's sort of like KitKat where they're improving everything and just tuning all the little details of the OS, adding in all useful APIs. It's going to be really nice to see where Android goes in the future. So. That's it, my quick recap of I.O. Huge thumbs up for Kotlin, hot damn about time. Huge thumbs up for Android O. Judgment reserved on life cycle and architecture components. Um, yeah, hope everyone who got to go enjoyed it as well, because I didn't. Yeah, so the GDG event in Dublin, where I was actually at on Wednesday, the I.O. extended. Great event held by the GDG guys. Huge thanks and shout out to them. Yeah. Really good event overall. So, that's it. It's my recap of I.O.